So as I promised last week, today's sermon is going to be considerably more interactive than normal. But still, please bear with me for a few minutes while I set some context for that conversation. It's no accident that the liturgical color for Bartholomew and so many of the other apostles is red. This is the color of martyrdom, and it is quite literally the color of blood. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time here because it's awfully unpleasant, but let's just say that in the ancient Near East, they didn't have the conception of the Eighth Amendment. Uh, the punishments for failure to fall into step with the, the rhythms and the rules of empire were severe to the point of unimaginable by our modern sensibilities. And yet so many of our forebears, of our predecessors in the faith, found the choice, at least according to their final testimonies, both written and handed on in the oral tradition, quite easy. Be flayed alive or disavow your faith. Yeah, sure, I'll take flayed alive, no problem. Now, it's kind of hard for us to translate ourselves into that. I don't know about you, but I have never been presented with a choice anywhere close to that threatening or that dramatic. And yet there's something about a faith that would find that such an easy question to answer that I find incredibly attractive and alluring. And when I get even the slightest taste of what it feels like, of how it is to have a faith of that level of devotion, that level of energy, that level of connection with the Spirit of God, I absolutely understand how the apostles could have been who they were and made the choices that they made. Now, please do not hear this as some kind of threat or admonition or finger wag. It's anything but. Hear this instead as encouragement or invitation into a depth of faith that is extremely difficult to plumb. But the reason I say encouragement or invitation is because in my experience is any indication the rewards for plumbing those depths are absolutely staggering. Now, I'm not talking about becoming the kind of person who can never peel yourself off the pews of the church, although for some people, that is the path. Those of you who know me more personally know that even though it's kind of my job to be in the church as often as possible, there are times that I want to get out of Dodge and go climb a 14,000 foot mountain. Yes, that is actually my idea of recreation. <laughs> but what I have discovered is even in that, I can't, or more to the point, shouldn't shake it off. If with every step, with every breath, going up that mountain, I am giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit, the experience is so radically different from what it is if I'm failing to do that, that I can hardly even describe it. If I'm failing to do that, my mind starts to wander all over the place, go to the thoughts it has no business thinking. Even my body isn't invited at the same level the benefits of being out in fresh air and being exerted in ways that it's not ordinarily exerted. But if I am, and I've actually had this experience fairly recently, the reward is, is something I can't really accurately encapsulate in words, and I hope you'll forgive me, I'm not even going to try in this setting. You're going to have to trust me that it is a reward worth having above all else. And I split that up only as one example. It's true of every single moment every single day. St. Paul's admonition to pray without ceasing, it's not a you bad people who don't have enough faith to pray all the time, you should start. It's a 
And do you have any idea what an unbelievably rewarding and beautiful and life-giving experience it is to pray all day, every day, without ever ceasing? Every single one of the suggestions, the commandments, the admonitions the Scripture gives us about what it looks like both in the inner life and the outer life to live as a faithful Christian are ultimately going to give us a level of joy and a level of participation in a new and heavenly reality that we cannot get any other way. This is why I get excited about St. Bartholomew's Day. I have no desire to be flayed alive, and I, I hope you don't either, otherwise I think some of us might need a, a couch trip today. But I do have a desire have that kind of faith, because I have tasted it just a little bit. I've seen it just a little bit. And the rewards are just absolutely staggering. And it is the only way there. So I'm going to throw out a question now and invite us to spend the rest of, of this sermon time pondering it. And I'm going to ask you to discuss it just in twos, because otherwise I think time is going to run out, and then those who wish to say something to the whole group at the end can. But the question is this. If you're resonating with what I'm saying, if you're having this experience ever or on a fairly regular basis, what can this church do to better nurture that for you? To better be a place within which you can come into even closer and deeper and more devoted contact with the God we know in Christ. And if you're a person who's having a hard time resonating, believe me, absolutely no judgment, you are in good company. What might it take to help you get to that next level? Because I know all too well how easy it is, and even though I've tasted it, I still fall into this trap, to get into the trap of half-heartedness, Gosh, there's more fun things to do. There's better ways to focus my mind. Other activities I could be doing right now. And even though I 